I have a Minolta Auto Bellows Rocker 100mm f4 lens here that I'm going to be disassembling. This lens is kind of interesting. It's a very specialized lens in that you can only use it on the Auto Bellows or on the, one of the Minolta Bellows systems. You can see that just looking at it externally there's no focusing mechanism at all because the way you would focus this lens is by having it mounted on the bellows and actually physically moving it back and forth. So the lens itself is very simple internally. It just has the aperture control on it and no focusing mechanism. The optics, it's also more like an uh, enlarging lens almost when you're thinking about it. So it's very simple to take apart. Perhaps one of the easiest Minolta lenses to take apart. But there are a few annoying design de decisions that do make it harder to access some of the components um, once you do get into the lens. I'm going to be disassembling this lens to get access to the optics and diaphragm so that those can be cleaned on their own. Um, and also remove some of the body sections so that those can be cleaned and repaired as well. We'll start off here by getting access to the back of the diaphragm by going in from the back of the lens. You can see that this back optic piece has two sets of little divots on the outermost ring here. Um, there are two for a spanning wrench, so we'll undo those two. All right, so I can just remove the glass piece right there. And the second set of divots on this actually allow you to remove the ring, this black ring that has the steps on it, and that's holding in the first back element, so the one that's exposed to the outside. So if there's actually fungus inside of this element, not just on the exterior surfaces, you can clean that off or try to take this apart and, and clean that off. And now we have access to the back of the diaphragm on the back side of the lens here as well. So we can try cleaning that off, but it's very easy to get access to the front of the diaphragm as well, which we'll do now. Looking at the front of the lens, we have the name ring going around here and another set of divots for the spanning wrench on either side of the name ring. Okay, so just remove that name ring. Now we can see down with the front optic now completely exposed in this section and then this black ring which is what filters and other things would screw into. So on the second ring set of rings here with the divots on the outermost ring and not on the one with the steps in here, we'll undo these two divots to actually undo the front optic completely and expose the front of the diaphragm. All right, and now we have access to the front of the diaphragm as well. Much like on the back optical piece, this front piece also has a second set of divots going around on the stepping ring down here that's actually holding the front glass piece in place. So if there's fungus or anything inside of the optics, you can undo this ring, remove the front optical piece, and then try cleaning inside of that as well. You can also unscrew on this back section here. You can see that there's a top section here, like a cap that's going on. Uh, and you can unscrew that to access some of the optics as well on the back section. I'm not going to do this on this particular copy because it's optically very clear and you should only unscrew these these optic sections and try to clean inside there if there's actually a problem with them because you're usually more likely to mess things up. So now I have access to both sides of the diaphragm and that can be cleaned off in a pretty good state. One kind of annoying thing about this lens is that um, the diaphragm is a little bit harder to remove, so this is actually one of the better places if you just need to clean off the diaphragm and it's not completely destroyed to um, to actually clean it off is in this current state with the front and back optics gone because you can clean inside lightly with a Q-tip or something, being careful not to press too hard on either side and actually deform the blades. You can clean inside here and clean it pretty well. Just remove another body section here, which is the ring that the filters are screwing into. It's held in place by the three screws here. I have this, just a metal ring. This is what would normally be the focusing ring or the, uh, the focusing part of the lens in here. But in this one, since there is no focusing mechanism, it's just a regular metal ring. Now we've exposed the diaphragm assembly itself, which is this gray section in here, and then the base of the lens, which is the aperture control ring and the mounting plate. Looking at the back of the lens now and at that mounting plate, the mounting plate itself is just held in place by four little black screws going around here inside of the mount. So undo these four and then we can lift off the mounting plate. Alright, so there we have just the simple mounting plate. 
and that also exposes all the mechanical sections of the lens that we're interested in. Because there's no focusing mechanism, it's a very simple mechanical setup. It's like the back of one of the 50 millimeter uh, MC or MD lenses, really, but just actually sitting on the diaphragm itself instead of on the back of the mounting plate. So you can see here that this entire ring section is the aperture control ring. So this is actually what is rotating when you would uh, have the lens mounted. And then this intersection here, the diaphragm, would normally be stationary. So I'd move this back and forth, rotating around, it around, which would open and close the diaphragm. And the way that this is being coupled together on the back of the lens is the diaphragm um, over on, the diaphragm is being hooked up directly by two components. One is the, um, the actual post in the back here, which is controlling this big curve on the back section here. The actual coupling into the diaphragm is happening somewhere over in this section. And when you move this curve back and forth, it directly opens and closes the diaphragm. Or when you move the post back and forth, it directly opens and closes the diaphragm. That's hitting the stop down lever. And then you can also hit this little button on this side to stop the, the lens down as well. So the other way that it can be controlled is with the aperture control ring and you, when you rotate that about. So imagine that the center section is fixed now and we rotate the aperture control ring about. You can see that this curve over here, the aperture control curve, is moving back and forth. And there's a little post on this curve, the uh, inner curve here, that's moving up and down as you rotate this back and forth. So as we move, it moves along that curve and goes up and down. And that is actually the way that the aperture control ring is coupling into the diaphragm. But one thing annoying about this lens is that for having such a simple setup internally, actually removing the diaphragm is a bit of a pain. You can see here that the diaphragm is going through the aperture control ring on the front section here, and it's being held in place on the back by this kind of uh, copper colored retaining ring that's going around here. So that one's easy enough to remove. You can just uh, kind of pry under it and then lift it up and then you can actually slide the diaphragm internally back and forth once you do remove that. But even after you do that, you can't actually slide the entire diaphragm out because you have these posts and different things sticking through and actually extending beyond the circle of the main diaphragm housing. So you can't slide it through. And the only way that I know of how to um, actually get the entire diaphragm mechanism out then is to actually disassemble it. So looking at the front of the lens here, you can see that the diaphragm itself is being held in by this kind of silver ring going around here, which is holding on the top plate which is then holding on the blades. So there's this silver ring, and what's holding the silver ring in place is the three little slotted screws coming in at the different spots over here, and those are coming in from the outside of the lens here. They're pretty small, and they're easy to strip, but what you would do if you're actually gonna disassemble the diaphragm is you would undo these three screws, take off this silver ring on the top, take off the front of the plate here, um, or try to take out the entire diaphragm in one piece then um, and then you'd be able to access the screws and different things that are coupling in these uh, levers and mechanical sections in the back undo those and then you could slide out the entire diaphragm and fully separate it from the uh, aperture control ring here if you want to be able to clean it a little, a little better. So that's why I recommend that if the diaphragm has oil on it, you just try to clean it in its current state because that's a whole lot of work and I'm not going to do that on this disassembly here. One other thing about the diaphragm piece here, the actual clicking sound when you turn it back and forth so that it stops at specific, at specific positions. We have this little tiny screw over here on the aperture control ring itself. Behind this screw, there's a spring and a little ball bearing. So once I undo this, you'll notice now I can turn this around and it's no longer clicking. So there's a little tiny spring behind there and then in front of the spring is a little tiny ball bearing. So that is where the clicking sound is coming from. And you should usually take that out if you're going to be actually be trying to remove the diaphragm fully because you're all, it's easy to lose one of the spring, the spring or the ball bearing. So that actually has most of the lens here disassembled. We have some things that could be further taken apart, but we do have the optics and you can further disassemble these if there is a fungus or dust or other things inside of them, not just on the exterior surfaces separate from the mechanical section here, and that's all really in one piece. Again, you can actually take apart the diaphragm and get it out of the aperture control ring, but it's a whole lot of work. So unless there's actually a problem with the diaphragm um, and you need to really clean it well and you are planning to take it apart, I don't think that's something you would normally need to do.
and then just the three little body sections here. So it's a very simple lens um, when you're taking it apart and you're not doing extensive disassembly. Starting on the reassembly here, it's also extremely simple to put back together. So looking here at the diaphragm and mechanical sections, first off we'll install the back sections here. You might as well just install the back optic first. It screws into place right here. And then we can lock it down using a spanning wrench and the two divots on the outside. Next up for the back section here, we have the mounting plate itself. Unlike a lot of the Minolta lenses, there's nothing complex that has to get coupled in. The mounting plate has literally nothing on it, it's just the mount. So we'll find on the mounting plate where the hole is over here for the stop down lever to go through. And then line up the four screw holes on the back section here. And just reattach it with the four black screws. All right, so that has the entire back reassembly complete. Moving on to the front reassembly here, we'll also just install the front optic first, just screws into place. And lock it down using the spanning wrench on the exterior black ring here. Next up we have the main body section here. And the only thing that we have to worry about for this is lining up the little white dot which is indicating the current aperture with the numbers over here. So just make sure that those line up and then find the position where the three screws in the inside line up with the holes on the back section of the diaphragm. And then finally we just have the name ring here which screws them back into place on the top section. All right, so that has the entire reassembly complete of this lens. Overall, this is probably one of the most simple lenses uh, to actually take apart and repair if you're just doing simple things like cleaning the optics or cleaning the diaphragm. If you actually want to remove the diaphragm, it's a little bit more involved because you have to um, probably disassemble the, the diaphragm and put it back together. But still, it's extremely simple because it doesn't have the complex mechanical coupling and the focusing pieces in it that a lot of the normal lenses do. The trade-off obviously is that you can only really use this lens on an auto bellows, but it is extremely simple to take apart and very repairable.